And the other examples that you might have studied before, if a coolie, a labor, is carrying something on his head and is moving horizontally, the displacement of this block is horizontal. But the force that is being applied is vertical because any two body, when they are in contact, the force, the normal reaction is perpendicular to the plane of contact that we have studied before, the plane of contact would be this and the normal reaction by the head of the coolie would be vertically upward. Now this is the force which is vertically upward and the, this is the displacement which is horizontal. Angle between them is clearly 90 degree. So actually even though you will be spending much of your energy or the coolie would be spending much of his energy in carrying this block on his head but still in the physical sense in the definition that we have adopted we will not say that this coolie has done any work because this definition the cos theta present here is going to make everything zero because cos 90 is zero so work done in this case as well will be zero okay And the work done will be positive in all other cases. For example, when the body, when the when the body or a ball is coming downward, earth is pulling it downward, and indeed it is coming downward. The work done by the earth is positive. When there's a block with the force and the displacement is having some acute angle, then the work done by us is positive. So in most of the cases in which the force is actually causing the displacement. In that case, work done by the agent causing that force will be positive. Remember, work done, work is not done by the force because physically, force is not a tangible thing. Work is done by the agent which causes that force. Okay. Now, this was the case because I mean this formula is very simple: f vector dot s vector. And if you at all have to use this formula then force have to be constant actually because if force is changing throughout the journey then you cannot have one value of force then this formula will not be useful to get the answer straight forward though in that case what we do when the force continuously change and let's see a very simple situation in which we have a spring we have a block and you're trying to pull this block away from the relaxed the position at which, at which the spring is relaxed now in such a way that there is no acceleration that means this force you have to apply such that it just balances the spring force there is no net force there is no acceleration in the block so you're moving it very slowly so in, in this case what would happen the force that you have to apply that has to continuously change because as the displacement would increase, the spring force would increase because we all know that the spring force is directly proportional to displacement. So the spring force will be equal to kx and as the displacement from the mean position would increase, the spring force would increase to balance that, you also have to increase your force. So work done by you would, in the, uh, would I mean the force applied by you will have to change continuously. So in these cases, the normal normally what you would do you would calculate work by integration the small amount of work done for an infinitesimally small displacement would be can be given as f into ds because an infinitesimally small displacement the force is not considerably going to change i mean force will remain constant almost almost there would be some error in this assumption and that error would be actually corrected by integration. That's the beauty of it. We'll see how. But somehow we are assuming that for a very small displacement, the force is going to remain constant in that infinite similarly small displacement. We are saying that force to be F that causes that small displacement. So the small amount of work in a very small amount of displacement is F into DS. The total work would be summation of those small works so that would be summation of f into ds. If we integrate this expression, putting the proper limits, we will get the work done. For example, in this case, 
at any displacement x if the block has been displaced by amount x then in that case the small force will be f into dx so sorry small work if we want to calculate the entire work then those small works should be summed up the summation would be done by integration integration actually does the summation so the integration would be f into dx now when the displacement has been x the force that you have to apply will be equal to k into x because it's, uh, when the displacement of the block is x the spring force is k into x and you have to apply the same amount of force to balance so the force that you will apply will be k into x so this is what you have to integrate and the limit would be the total work done would be suppose we are looking for a displacement d so the uh, limit would be displacement this x is varying from 0 to d 0 to d now all we have to do is integrate this k is a constant that will come out of integration and integration of x dx is x squared by 2 put the limit 0 to d that will come out as half k d squared so this is the work done by you when we when you displace a block from zero position of from the position at which the spring is relaxed to a displacement d working against the spring and this is the work then obviously this work that we have done this is the amount of energy that we will lose and this is the amount of energy that the spring block system will gain when is it is stretched it has some energy because when you held it loose something would happen it can do some work so that is the potential energy of the spring block system that it will go into but this will be the general approach when the force is not constant this is how we will calculate work through integration